So today I'm working on my Commodore PET keyboard here and I was trying to reverse engineer the uh, protocol for how the uh, scanning is done on the keyboard matrix in the actual PET uh, because I want to see if I can make my own keyboard for the PET uh, because this one's not super great um, let's say. So I was looking at that with an oscilloscope and I was having difficulty probing the pins on here and I was thinking oh I wonder if that is 100 mil pitch it, it really looks like it so I thought if I can put that on there I can put it on a breadboard and then plug it in and then put some other headers on there and I can stick my probes on those and be much easier so I grabbed the closest thing to me that was 100 mil pitch and I went ahead and plugged it in there and sure enough it was and I was oh okay good I can do that then it occurred to me what I had just done. That's a Teensy uh, Plus Plus 2.0. That's a keyboard matrix. That's a keyboard. And uh, so I realized I could make a USB Commodore PET keyboard adapter out of nothing more than just plugging a Teensy in. So I went ahead and uh, I made some software that makes it work as a USB keyboard over the Teensy. So the only things you need are a Commodore PET keyboard, the ribbon cable, I believe this is compatible with all versions of Commodore PET keyboard. I know there are some where this is not a connector, but they are soldered in directly, but that shouldn't matter as long as the pinout here is the same. Uh, okay, this does not work with all of them, I suppose. I don't have a, a business keyboard or the original chiclet one. Uh, so I can't say what the software is for those. I haven't written that yet because I don't have them. So anyway, uh, there'll be a link to the, uh, GitHub repository where you can download the, uh, code to use on your own if you would like to do this. Before we put any software in the Teensy, we have to make two modifications first. One of them is to bend this pin out of the way because the connector is actually keyed on the Commodore PET keyboard. Next, we need to disconnect this LED because it is drawing current on one of our pins we have an internal pull-up on. We use this coupled with a pin that is pulled low to pull current through one of the pull-up pins and sink it low. This LED is constantly pulling current and sinking it low all the time, so it seems like one key is pressed on every row. I've done this by just disconnecting this resistor on one side, which I recommend as opposed to just removing the LED. If you ever want to use the LED again, you'll probably destroy it when you touch it with the soldering iron because the plastic case will melt. So here we have the uh, keyboard and we have the Arduino software that you use to program the Teensy and we have just G edit up over here. So we'll go ahead and program the Teensy. There we go. We can step over to G edit and now we can try typing in it on the keyboard. And as we can see, it works. Now this is Operating as a USB keyboard, uh, this is Ubuntu, it's whatever version, doesn't matter. So, we have uh, basic functionality, all of the letter keys work, uh, enter key, you know, that stuff. The special symbol keys are bound to what they would normally be. Uh, one of the things about those is that on a normal keyboard, those are a shift function of a number key. So, it automatically holds shift and presses the equivalent number to get those keys. Um, and that means that the shift key is handled specially. If you're going to try and use this with a program where you need to hold down shift, it will not work because I have it programmed to where shift is not pressed until you press the key because it matters which one you have, especially with these arrow keys. So that's the biggest problem. The arrow keys, there are only two keys for horizontal and vertical. You hold shift to change which direction you go in. And that means that you can't hold shift and go up because that would just select text on a normal keyboard. So that is uh, programmed in as it was. Delete is backspace instead of delete. Um, just to make life easier. There is no shift function to that. Uh, escape is bound to run stop because there is no escape key. Uh, be I have RVS 
on off, uh, built, or RVS off, set to control, um, which means tab does not work there. So tab is bound to the up arrow there. And uh, shift lock is not programmed because on mine it is broken and I have the wires de-soldered. So functionality for that will come later. But uh, other than that, yeah, the keyboard works perfectly fine. There are some uh, collision issues with the scanning matrix. Like uh, W and A cannot both be pressed at the same time. Uh, and that'll happen all around. I've included the matrix in an open document spreadsheet, and you can take a look at that, and then you'll get a better idea of what the conflicts are. But other than those, uh, it is basically fully functional. Now, the graphics keys are not bound in any sort of way. It would be really cool to get this set up to print those, but you need to be able to do capital letters on a modern computer, so that won't work. Uh, if I get shift lock uh, going again, I might try use that and have that bound to the graphics characters if I can find a ski can or keyboard scan code set that would actually send those. If not, I'll see what can be done, but I don't have high hopes. Uh, operating system dependent, you might be able to send alt codes uh, like you normally would. So that is basically how the keyboard works. Uh, it's pretty well, uh, pretty good. If you're curious, I got the key computer, the Commodore Pet, missing that key. It's unfortunate. If you want to help out with this, feel free to fork the repo on GitHub and make a pull request after you've done some changes. I suspect that there is some stuff that can be done to help fix the scan issues. I just haven't put in the time for it yet. If you have any other questions, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll try and get back to you.